Okay, everybody, welcome back. Email us, as always, freedom at charliekirk.com, and subscribe to our podcast. Uh, joining us now is Mike Davis, who does a great job and has a new film project that he wants to discuss with us. Mike, welcome to the program. Let's get started and play the trailer. Let's play cut 111, please. Four corrupt, politically motivated prosecutors. One target, Donald Trump. They say they're upholding the law, but a close examination reveals politics of the very worst kind meant to influence the 2024 election. Investigations unprecedented in American history, part of a broader attempt to silence and penalize a president who challenged the status quo. You have four or five different prosecutions in different form on different highly aggressive theories and applications of the law. On the eve of an election for the President of the United States, can there be any doubt that there's a sentiment of this is get Trump? Get Trump. These prosecutions against President Trump, both the criminal prosecution along with the civil fraud prosecution, is blatant election interference. It's Democrat lawfare to take out President Trump. They fear that they can't beat Trump on November 5th, 2024. And so they just want to throw him in prison for the rest of his life. Revealing the depth of four politically motivated prosecutions. Chasing Trump, political prosecutions, justice gone wrong. Mike, tell us all about it. Looks excellent. Yeah, thank you for having me on, Charlie. Chasing Trump is produced by the good people at American Greatness. And I was pleased to volunteer my time to participate on this important documentary because it shows this is Democrat lawfare and election interference driven by Biden and his White House counsel and his Justice Department to take out Trump on many different fronts. They have four unprecedented criminal indictments. The first one of those starts on Monday. Uh, Soros funded Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg is uh, bringing an unprecedented uh, indictment against Trump. A trial starts on Monday for, for the non-felony of a businessman settling a nuisance claim. And these Democrat operatives have transformed this, what would be at best time board uh, bookkeeping misdemeanors from seven years ago. Somehow they've turned these into felony charges against Trump, like 34 felony charges that the prior Manhattan DA Cy Vance the Manhattan U.S. Attorney, the Federal Election Commission, and Alvin Bragg himself declined to prosecute until Matthew Colangelo got deployed from the Biden Justice Department, a senior Biden Justice Department political appointee to re resurrect this zombie case against Trump that starts on Monday. And that's just one of the four cases. You also have uh, Alvin, uh, you also have Jack Smith, I'm sorry, charging President Trump down in Florida for the, uh, for the former president having his presidential records in the office of former president, which is allowed by the Presidential Records Act. At the same time, they gave Biden a pass for his clear espionage from when he was a vice, the vice president and even a senator where he made $8 million on his, uh, on his book advance when he intentionally gave classified records to his ghostwriter. And not a damn thing happened to Biden for clear espionage, yet they're going after Trump for presidential records he's allowed to have. You also have two prosecutors going after Trump, Fannie Willis down in Georgia, Fulton County, Georgia, and Atlanta, and Jack Smith going after Trump for objecting to a presidential election, which is allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887. This, these are political prosecutions. We've been talking about this for nearly two years, Charlie. We've been way out in front of everyone on this and it's coming to fruition. It's starting on Monday with this Bragg trial. The American people are gonna tune into this trial and see what a bogus trial this is. And this is Democrat lawfare. This is election interference. This is going to backfire on Biden and the Democrats. And this Chasing Trump documentary lays this out. So, so Mike, I think that it's hurting uh, the Democrats politically, but they are they are moving forward at a rapid pace. The acceleration is really disturbing, and, and it is that of a desperate, dying third world regime. So do you think there's any chance, I'm just going to ask you plainly and bluntly, Mike Davis, do you think there's any chance that Donald Trump avoids conviction at this upcoming trial? 
No, no. I mean, you're you're dealing with a biased, um, a George Soros funded Manhattan DA, Matthew Colangelo being deployed from the the Biden Justice Department. This Democrats Manhattan Judge Juan Mershon donated to Biden versus Trump in 2020. Judge Juan Mershon donated to another anti-Trump group. His adult daughter Lauren Mershon is a leading Democrat consultant who's consulted for Biden and Kamala Harris and many Democrats. She has a, a financial stake in this criminal trial starting on Monday over which her father is provide, pr presiding. She's fundraising off of this criminal trial, this, the, these, these criminal proceedings. And Judge Juan Mershon refuses to recuse in violation of New York law. And when Trump raises this issue in a motion to recuse and raises this publicly, this Judge Juan Mershon responds by saying that Trump is somehow making violent threats against Judge Mershon and his adult daughter. Apparently, when you raise evidence of a judge's bias, that somehow is a violent threat. And he, this Judge Mershon has illegally, unconstitutionally gagged President Trump, where he cannot talk about Matthew Colangelo getting sent from the Biden Justice Department to go after Trump with this unprecedented indictment of a former president who happens to be the leading presidential candidate. President Trump can't talk about Lauren Mershon and how she's making money off of her dad's trial of President Trump. I mean, this is lawfare. This is election interference. There's a reason these Democrats waited 30 months to bring these four different indictments in four different places. And in three of these places, New York, D.C., and Atlanta, you have these Democrat judges, these Democrat prosecutors, these Democrats, other attorneys, these Democrat witnesses, and these Democrat hellholes. There's no chance that Trump is going to get a fair trial anywhere. And that's the point. This is election interference because they know they can't beat Trump on November 5th. 2024. So they want to bankrupt him. They want to disqualify him from the ballot. And they want him to die in prison. Yes, they do. And so l let me ask you now, Mike, do you think there's any chance the federal cases will be heard before November? It, they could. It would be very hard because on the federal case with Jack Smith on January 6th, remember, it is not a crime to object to a presidential election. It's allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887. Democrats objected to Republican wins in 1968, 2000, 2004, 2016. You don't see Al Gore and John Kerry and Hillary Clinton in prison. You also have a First Amendment right to object. And President Trump has raised the issue of presidential immunity in that case. If you're gonna charge President Trump of Jack Smith is going to charge President Trump for contemplating firing his acting attorney general. That is clearly a presidential act. That is clearly covered by presidential immunity. So the Supreme Court is gonna to have to decide that case. There's gonna be oral arguments later this month on April 25th. I presume the Supreme Court's gonna rule on presidential immunity by the end of June. And then uh, I presume the Supreme Court's going to hold that the presidents are immune from criminal prosecution for their official acts, just like federal judges, just like members of Congress. The case will get remanded to Judge Chutkin, this Obama judge in D.C., and she'll have a mini trial on what is Jack Smith alleging that's within President Trump's presidential powers that are immune from prosecution versus what did Trump do in his personal capacity that are not. If that happens, it will be very difficult for Jack Smith to try Trump for January 6th in DC. Now this uh, Mar-a-Lago case for the presidential records where, uh, for, where Garland and Jack Smith have charged Trump with espionage while, they, while Garland gave Biden a pass for Biden's clear espionage when Trump is protected by the Presidential Records Act. Uh, it, it, it doesn't look likely that that case will get to trial because there are so many pretrial issues, but at least in Florida, we know with Judge Eileen Cannon that she's a fair judge. She's gonna ensure that Trump gets a fair trial in Florida. And she's not gonna be a rubber stamp for Trump, uh, far from it. She's denied many of Trump's motions, but she's gonna do what any judge is supposed to do, which is to protect the criminal defendant's constitutional mm -hmm. rights and to make sure he gets a fair trial. Stay right there, uh, Mike Davis. Email us, freedom at charliekirk.com, everybody. I wanna tell you about one of our partners here. ReliefFactor.com, 100% drug-free relief factor, knee pain, back pain, joint pain, elbow pain. You might be suffering from all these different types of pain, and you might want to get out of it today. Well, Relief Factor offers you hope to get out of pain. 
Uh, the Relief Factor Quick Start is 100% drug free. A uh, Relief Factor was developed by doctors searching for a better alternative for pain. A uh, Relief Factor uses unique formula of natural ingredients like turmeric and omega 3s. Whether it's neck, back, joint, or muscle pain, Relief Factor can help you feel much better. Unlike pills that simply mask your pain for a short period of time, Relief Factor helps your body's natural response to inflammation. Over 1 million people have tried the Relief Factor Quick Start, so go on and check it out right now, relieffactor.com. That is relieffactor.com, or call 1-800-4-RELIEF. We'll be right back, everybody. Email me directly, freedom at charliekirk.com. Sorry, I'm from Australia. I'm very progressive. Um, it is very, very important because Deschirk Van Hoffen said the ultimate test of a moral society, what kind of world it will leave for its children. And this is a moment, and I'm fighting from the Australia. I don't know if it's going to turn, but guess what? I'm going to fight and die. I don't care because I would rather die for something instead of believe in nothing. And I want to interrupt here. It's easy for an American pastor to say that. It wasn't easy during COVID because we, we were acting like Australia. When you say that, you actually mean it because they, they don't, they're not joking around in Australia. Australia is East Germany on steroids right now. We can go through the COVID stuff, the forced vaccination, the lack of mobility. And Americans, part of the alphabet mafia here in America, they want to bring the Australia model here to the States. The alphabet mafia and Islam, but we're going to leave that for another time. The Islam, wait. the alphabet mafia are the opposite ideology of Christianity. And it is a point of tension that the left have found in order to criminalize Christianity. It's very, very important because we love kids. We care about our children. We would not let the devil take our children. We're not going to let some drag queen, mentally ill men, go around kids and talk to them and sing to them. We are not going to let our children be gay. Why? Because we believe if you practice homosexuality, you're actually going to go to hell. So the problem we're facing at the moment, the left and the secularists have found the biggest point of tension with Christianity, and they're going to maximize on it until everything. You have no idea. Like in Australia at the moment, we are just getting a bill after a bill after a bill. It doesn't stop. Every few months, I have to check all awesome. What am I doing now that's illegal? What am I doing? Like me speaking illegal, me praying is illegal. And that's how you know, by the way, it's the spirit of Babylon. The spirit of Babylon attacks prayer, preaching, worship. We have seen the three things in the last few. This is not open to interpretation. The preaching of the gospel, hate speech laws. Why are we pro freedom of speech? Because we wanna preach the truth of the Bible. You wonder why secularists hate the Constitution? Because through the Constitution, they are unable to stop the preaching of what they call hate speech. And by hate speech, they mean the Bible. That's really what they mean. The, the homophobic ideology, I'm like, yeah, the Bible. That, that's really, what, what are you really talking about? Let, let's be honest. Secondly, prayer. We are seeing in Australia, the criminalization of prayer. We are the first nation in the whole entire Western civilization to criminalized prayer because we at the moment we are no longer in Jerusalem we are in Babylon it's very very important and the reason a lot of the older generation pastors they're unable to move because they don't realize we are no longer in Jerusalem David is not in charge it is Nebuchadnezzar this is the reason it was illegal to worship at some point <laughs> whenever the spirit of Babylon takes control three things happen criminalization gospel prayer worship all these three things in the last four years have come under attack this is not a conspiracy friend the spirit of babylon is right here right now operating so you are no longer in jerusalem where you are in the white house and the people are praying no 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 no. pastors are replaced by drag queens and gay men and trans that's actually what's happening and you have to understand we are no longer in jerusalem we are in babylon which means you will have to be Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and speak the truth of the Bible when it comes to worship, prayer, preaching. Amen. Amen. So I want to get to questions, but Andrew, I think it's very important that you emphasize, I, I want you, to, you're from Egypt, you grew up around institutional Islam. You have said some things that some people in this audience would feel uncomfortable repeating. 
but I want you to really lean in on it. You have a full green light. Okay, hey everybody, welcome back. Email us, as always, freedom at charliekirk.com. Mike Davis continues with us. So, Mike, help me understand, the polling is showing that this is not helping Donald Trump. I mean, not helping Democrats, it's helping Trump. Why are Democrats continuing on the lawfare campaign? Why have they not pressed the brakes? Well, if they were smart, they would, because at the Article 3 Project, we've done over 3,000 media hits in the last nearly two years, including many times on your show, and we've helped change the politics of this, where these Democrats thought they were going to bring these indictments and just take out Trump. It was going to be too messy, and Republican primary voters would just say, we, we can't deal with this. Let's go with someone else. They tried the same thing during the Kavanaugh confirmation, uh, where I was the chief counsel for nominations on the Senate Judiciary Committee. They thought they would just bring six, six bogus allegations against Kavanaugh, and it would be too messy for Republicans who are cowards and don't have a spine and Republicans would just throw Kavanaugh overboard. And I think they thought the same thing here, that Republicans would just throw Trump overboard. And it's had the opposite effect. It's actually emboldened Republicans. It took it took a while for many of these Republicans to get on board. Uh, it was pretty lonely out there for six months or so, but they got on board and this is backfiring badly. We are taking, uh, we are turning lemons into lemonade and we are gonna make sure that these Democrat prosecutors and these Democrat judges and these Democrat hellholes in New York, D.C. and Atlanta understand that the American people, not Democrat operatives, get to choose the president of the United States on November 5th, 2024. So the other one, Mike, that we can't forget about is the confiscation of Donald Trump's business assets. And there was all this drama about posting bond. It is part of this lawfare campaign. It is under appeal. What is the status of that as they're trying to deprive Trump of his cash and his freedom? This is truly outra outrageous and scary and dangerous, what New York Attorney General Tish James is doing to Trump, because this is so much bigger than Trump. They went after Trump for the non-fraud of a businessman paying back sophisticated Wall Street banks in full on time as agreed with interest. They rigged the case so it was front of this this Democrat Manhattan judge, Arthur Ingeron, a total partisan clown. And they came up with like this $500 billion damages award when all the banks got paid back in full, all the banks are happy and all the banks would gladly do business with Trump going forward. No one was defrauded, but Tish James used this to go after Trump. They got this outrageously large damages award, unconstitutionally punitive, damages award in, or, in, for, or, in order for Trump to, to file an appeal, to pursue an appeal on, the, on this clearly illegal, clearly unconstitutional judgment on many different fronts. Uh, they, they made Trump put up this bond, which was just an outrageously high bonds. The appellate court reduced the bond, but it's still too high. Trump was able to, to get the assets to come up with this bond. And now Tish James say, is saying that's that's not good enough. She's going to apparently try to go like take his property from him. Good, good luck to her, Tish James. And th again, this is so much bigger than Trump because if they can do this to a billionaire, former and likely future president, just imagine what they can do to the rest of us. Why would any person, why would any businessman want to invest in New York if you have these partisan Democrat prosecutors and judges who can bring third world Marxist tactics and just take away your property overnight without due process, without fair hearing, uh, without following the constitution. It, this, is, this is unacceptable. These Democrats have crossed the Rubicon with their lawfare and election interference. That's right. Mike, uh, plug your documentary one more time, how people can find it, all the details surrounding that. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's, it's coming out on Monday. It's called Chasing Trump. I just volunteered to appear in this thing, but it's American greatness, the good people at American greatness who are producing and getting out this documentary ch chasing Trump about this Democrat lawfare and election interference. And it's going to be a game changer. Mike, thank you so much. Excellent work. Talk to you soon. Check it out. Chasing Trump. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie.